Hi guys, it's Samuel Larson here and I know a lot of you guys have e-commerce stores that have a pretty low to no traffic at all and you're still wondering like how do I optimize this store for conversions and um, what can I actually do with uh, my current traffic to take this store and make it better. Now, one thing I gotta say right off the bat is that uh, it's not really about the traffic that matters, but it's actually the conversions that you're getting. So let's look at this quick example here. So we have a typical landing page on the left and a typical e-commerce site on the right. Now, don't worry about these absolute numbers here on the red box. It's just to illustrate. So if you are running an e-commerce store with less than 3% conversions, you might still be okay. Okay, but the, the really metric that matters is the total numbers of days to run the test. So if you have a 30% conversion rate, it takes just five days to run a test like this. But compare that to a typical e-commerce site where it would take 65 days to run a same test. And the only difference here is the conversion rate. So it's not actually like uh, about the traffic, it's about the conversion rate. And if you are able to have a, a higher conversion rate, for example, on the landing page, you can test faster. So traffic is not really an issue in terms of this, but uh, if you want to do a validated test, you most likely cannot do it without having a fair bit of conversions. Now, if you are here or somewhere in the middle where uh, you're still getting sales, um, you might run an A-B test, but it just takes a lot longer to build uh, up a relevant sample size. Because uh, low traffic really equals and means that you cannot A-B test uh, and uh, draw conclusions within a reasonable amount of time. And uh, a reasonable amount of time really means like over a month, because after a month you start running into problems. So people delete their cookies and then that means that the A-B testing is not really working anymore. You start hitting a seasonality changes. So let's say it's a Christmas and now it's a not anymore. So where can you like really draw the line? Like how valid is this test actually? Um, it's very difficult to say. So let's not focus on uh, the drawbacks, but let's focus on what you can actually do with uh, your current traffic because uh, you cannot really influence the traffic that much. Like, don't be one of these people that like guides a lot of uh, random traffic to their site and makes conclusions based on that because that will not be relevant to you at all. Now, the good news is that uh, you can pretty much do everything when it comes to optimization. But one thing you cannot do is validate your hypothesis. So, um, that's the good news. The bad news really is that you will be guessing a lot. So everything will be kind of like based on uh, best practices, based on heuristics and so on, like uh, what makes sense instead of uh, what the numbers say. So that's the bad news. But on the other hand, again, good news is that uh, even guessing can often produce uh, pretty good results. So it's not a waste of time to do this kind of thing. And really even better news is that uh, you still have a lot of the toolkit available for use. Um, like I said, the bad news is just, you just cannot validate these things. Now, there is really a step-by-step -step list that I run through whenever I'm optimizing sites that get less than 500 conversions per month. And uh, 500 is really a good uh, magic number here because you're really looking uh, to dive traffic. Like let's say you're doing A and B testing and uh, 
you want both conversions to hit around 250 in a month period. So that's why 500 tends to be a good benchmark for testing. Now, I would say first, you just need to prioritize. If you're having a site that is not getting too many sales yet, just ask yourself, like, how important is optimizing a CRO really? Because um, there's no reason to optimize before you have actually validated your business model and before you have uh, validated your value proposition, your offer. Like, um, ask yourself first, like, does anybody even want this? And uh, really, optimization itself, it will not fix faulty business models and it will only make bad models a little bit better but uh, if your business is losing money like we can barely probably get break even but like we cannot get you the profitability most likely so if you are really new you actually don't need CRO what you need is for you to validate your business model and uh, you to run some MVPs, minimum viable product tests, and see what works, what doesn't. And for that, you don't need a super optimized site. So you don't need to worry about conversion rates in the beginning, just worry about your business model. With that said, let's say first one is a check. CRO is important. Uh, then let's ask, how much data do I really have? Because uh, you might have enough data to test, uh, you might not, but uh, you want to be able to draw some conclusions based on this existing data already. So you can always drive conclusions from segments that have uh, at least 250 conversions at minimum. Um, but notice that uh, whenever you're drawing segments from uh, an extended period, you want to be certain that uh, you haven't done uh, any big changes in this period because um, if you make uh, some side changes all the time, like most people do, that will skew the data again and you might actually be drawing conclusions from uh, your past site thinking uh, this data is from uh, the present site. So because you're constantly fiddling with your site, you need to be really careful with this. Okay, next step I would really say is, uh, let's say these uh, two are a good uh, basis there. You have uh, your conversions and you have some data to draw on and it all looks good in terms of that. Then third really on the priority list is functionality testing. So just take your tablet, take your mobile, See how the site responds to different resolutions because there's almost always issues with mobile. And uh, most people, when they look at it, even top level agencies, they just look at it like from their big 30 inch monitor and like looks awesome. And then like it's complete crap on mobile phones. Like you have to scroll for 20 minutes to get through the end of the page. So what look like a short page for uh, this big desktop computer would be massively long on mobile, for example, and people just don't scroll that long. So see if you can find some low hanging fruits from there. Like what, what would be easy fixes? And technical testing, this is almost always overlooked because it tends to be a little bit boring. Um, so you want to ask like, does it function? Can I see some uh, uh, improvements from the data? So for example, mobiles are not converting at all. Maybe you have some big, big issues there. And that's why you should always focus on functionality testing before you really dive into the CRO process itself. Well, it's not really like it is a part of the CRO process, but most people don't think of it that way. Then fourth step, these are the qualitative measures. So really get someone to do a so-called heuristic analysis. Uh, so get an expert to run through your site and see like 
what improvements would he make to the site? And don't do this yourself because you need fresh eyes. You need fresh perspective and you need to be challenged with your existing beliefs. So this is where expert can uh, really help you, you. And it often just takes a few hours for them to do the analysis. Maybe like 10 hours for the complete thorough uh, check and a report, of course. Uh, so challenge yourself with new perspectives. You are looking to get challenged on the design, on the functionality and all the parts that you really love. And uh, on that, like, uh, I also need to add a point that oftentimes because you're a retailer, you're working with your store all the time, you're working with your products, you tend to hit this curse of knowledge type of thing where you cannot unknow what you already know. And what this means is that you see the site differently than a beginning user would. And uh, you even see your products in a different light. So a person coming to the site for the first time would have a lot more questions that uh, you think are obvious, but really aren't to that person. Then a fifth step that you can use even without too much traffic, user testing and uh, user recordings. So there's an easy way to get session recordings and they are really great uh, in seeing some bottlenecks on your site. So if you can see like people um, going through different pages looking for information but not finding it, this is something you can uh, find out even with no traffic because it's a quality measure. You're seeing uh, individual recordings of people going through your site, your actual customers, your target group and see how they react. And uh, you can get this relatively inexpensively. Like Hotjar doesn't cost you almost anything. If you're using, uh, doing user testing, it's still relatively ex inexpensive. All you need to do is uh, get, uh, I found 10 people works really well because 10 people will probably get 90% of your problem solved. So if you ask them a very specific tasks that a normal user would uh, run through, that would be the best. So uh, find a product uh, that would be perfect for these kind of uses, for example. And then you just watch and ask them to like, report problems and get some feedback that way. There's really no reason to test with more than 10 people because uh, you are looking to solve your biggest problems. And uh, like I said, you can solve 9% of your problems this way. Now, sixth step, uh, reach out to customers with surveys. So you can do on page surveys or you can use after sales surveys. I like both because both will give you the most insight. And this always reveals a lot because you're not just looking uh, for a surface level things here like, oh, I like the site or uh, checking out was really easy. What you're looking to do is dive deep. So you want to encounter into and uh, examine what kind of language people are using. What are they valuing? And uh, most importantly, probably what friction points are there? What objections would there be? And on-site surveys would be great. Like uh, for example, product page, 30 seconds on the product page, pop up a survey. Is there anything stopping you from purchasing right now? Or what ho what's holding you back? Something like that really can reveal a lot. Like, oh, I have no idea about the shipping information. Very common. Let's put that there on the tab. They will be able to find it and so on. So easy fixes, very easy fixes and uh, very high impact fixes as well. All right, let's look at some uh, quantitative measures you might be still able to do. Because so far we've only focused on the qualitative stuff. So let's look at the numbers and so on. Um, you might still be able to run heat maps on key bases. And 
The reason here is that uh, you only need around 3000 views per page to really draw conclusions from a heat map. And 3000 views, if you're getting 100 views per month, per day, that's only a month. So you can get data that is not skewed by uh, these other measures, but uh, you can actually draw conclusions. So if you're getting at least 100 views per page, uh, run a heat map on it. Yeah. Then um, you might be able to test some big things. And if you're looking to do an AP test, uh, I would recommend that you just go for the cold, like go for big, bold changes that really change the page a lot. And things that uh, you can really show to a large amount of people. So there's no real reason to test like um, a different copy on your email uh, subscription box in the bottom of the homepage, because nobody can really see that that often. Like you cannot uh, draw big conclusions on that. So you want to test most likely site-wide changes. So how about a header bar where uh, you message all of your visitors with an offer? Test that. Um, test your value proposition. Like, so for example, in your homepage, completely flip it around and see what kind of headline works. Um, test uh, different pricing of the products. So if you have a product that uh, is selling, you're only selling like one or two products, you can easily test uh, different pricing and see uh, how it affects. This is okay test even if you are running uh, it longer because uh, it doesn't really get that much effect from the seasonality and like, uh, well, cookies still expire, but um, it's a big impact change. And uh, really to finish off, um, you might be able to still test your highest traffic pages. So take a look at uh, your Google Analytics and see which pages are really high traffic. So most likely these are the product pages, the cart page and uh, those are also great pages to test because uh, they have a high impact on your bottom line. So for e-commerce in general, these are category pages, product pages and so on. And these are the pages that get a lot of visits. But again, be careful with small sample sizes. So you want to have at least that 250 conversions per variant so that uh, you are actually not drawing these ridiculously false conclusions. And also like uh, we've been only talking about testing macro goals so far. So it is okay to test micro goals as well. Like it is very unscientific, but this way you can uh, draw conclusions like are they add to cart buttons button clicks uh, significantly improving with this kind of change. And if they are, um, then although it kind of grinches me to say this, but uh, you just want to implement that change because uh, it's your best chance to improve your conversions. You will not know how it impacts the bottom line, but uh, at the same time, uh, it's like your best guess. So go with that. So I really hope this video gave you some powerful ideas. And uh, it also proved that even though you might not getting a, be getting a lot of visitors to your site, you can still improve and optimize your website. So visitors and traffic and conversions doesn't have to be the stopping point in uh, you seeking a better future for your visitors, your business, and eventually yourself. Traffic definitely helps, but it is not an absolute necessity, as you can see. All right, uh, gotta thank you very much for watching this long, and I'm sure you got a lot of powerful insight. Now, for more conversion optimization and e-commerce related videos, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you are one of my loyal fans, I really appreciate if you shoot me a quick message on the comments and like the video. Thank you very much and I will see you on the next one.